Hey guys, we're now going to solve energy problems with vertical springs. Let's check it out. So when you have a mass, a moving mass that is interacting with a vertical spring, meaning it's pushing against a vertical spring or being pushed by the spring, something like this over here, where a moving mass is going to push against the spring, we have all three types of mechanical energies. We have kinetic energy, we have gravitational potential energy of the block or the mass, that's because the mass has velocity, it's moving up and down, uh, and the mass has potential energy. The potential energy is changing because the heights are changing. And then we're also gonna have the elastic potential energy of the spring. Cool? So let's check this out here. I have a five kilogram mass. So let me put over here, mass equals five, is released from three meters above the top of the spring. So this gap here is three meters. I'm gonna leave some space because I wanna call this point A. And I want to call this point B right here, the beginning and the very top of the spring. The spring is a 400 Newton meter spring. This is the coefficient of the spring, spring force coefficient. Um, and it says calculate the maximum compression that the spring will experience. So if this falls from here to here, it's going to then hit against this little platform here, and it's going to cause the spring to be compressed further down until the system stops, right? So it's gonna go down a little bit more to another point, let's call this point C, and it will have some compression. That maximum compression is what we want. So I'm gonna call this XC because it's the compression at point C right here, okay? Now, maximum compression is when it goes all the way down, which means it implies that the kinetic energy here is zero. And that's because obviously the velocity at that point zero. Maximum is it went all the way and now it stopped. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? We're gonna do this using obviously the energy equation. Now the energy equation is always from two points and you have to pick the two points. You know information uh, about A and you want information about C because you wanna know what is this guy here. So we're gonna write an energy equation from A to C to try to figure out what is XC. Cool? So I'm going to write KA, UA, work non-conservative, KC, UC. The block is released, presumably from rest. You can assume that. So the kinetic energy in the beginning is zero. There's no speed. Uh, potential energy, remember, there's two types of potential energy. I'm going to split them up here. There's gravitational potential energy at point eight and elastic potential energy. Well, I mean, there could be these two types of energies. In this case, you have a height, but you don't have spring compression. So the only one you have is... Uh, gravitational. Work done by non-conservative forces, if you remember, is the work done by you. You're not doing anything. There are no external forces. You're just watching, plus the work done by friction. There's no reference to friction, so we're going to assume that there is no friction. This whole thing is gone. And on the right side, you have no kinetic energy because at the end, it stops, right? That's why it's maximum. Um, and you do have, do have potential energy. Now, remember, potential energy, there are two types. You have at point C, gravitational potential energy, and at point C, elastic potential energy. Um, at the bottom, we're going to say that this is the, since this is the lowest point, the height here is zero. Therefore, there's no gravitational potential energy, but the spring is certainly compressed, so there is some spring energy, okay? So I have here MGH at point A, and then I have here half KX squared at point C. Those are the two types of energies. I know all of these numbers um, except um, XC. Well, actually, it's a little bit more complicated, and I'll show you. So let's go through this real quick. The mass is 5. That's easy gravity. I'm going to use a 10. Now, the height is a little tricky because the height is the distance from A all the way to C. And that height is actually 3 plus X. You don't know what X is, but that's okay. We can just put it here. 3 plus XC. Cool. So let's see where this goes. I have half K is 400 and XC squared. So notice that I have XC twice and that's okay because it's just one unknown. So we can solve this. We're just going to have to uh, make this look a little bit cleaner. So I have here 50 times 3 plus XC and over here I have 200 XC squared. I have to distribute this 50 here. So it's going to be 150 plus 50 XC equals 200 XC squared. And you might notice what's happening here. I have one term with an X squared, one term with an X, 
and one term with no x whatsoever. This is a setup for a quadratic equation. So unfortunately, we're going to have to solve a quadratic equation here. Uh, I have to get this in the quadratic form. And remember, the quadratic form is ax squared plus, uh, plus or minus bx plus or minus c equals 0. If you need to review this, please do. And remember that a has to be positive, which means I have to move everything to the other side so that these two terms here, the 150 and the 50, are hanging out on the right side here with the x. So it's going to be 200x squared, xc squared, minus 50xc minus 150. Um, the physics is over here. We just have to do the algebra. So one of the things you can do to simplify this, you can divide everything by 50. And then you get 4 xc squared, that's your a, minus 1. There's a 1 implied in front of the x here. That's your b. Actually, your b includes the minus, so be careful there. And then this is minus 3. This is your c equals 0. So now let's write the quadratic equation. xc equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. I'm not going to write the whole thing because I'm running out of space. Uh, but obviously you have to know that. So minus b, b is negative 1, all of that, plus or minus b squared, I'm um, sorry, the square root of b squared plus 4, sorry, minus 4ac. When you solve this, the stuff that's inside of the square root, that actually gives you 49, which the square root of 49 is 7, uh, divided by 2a, which is 2 4. So this becomes a plus 1, or a 1, plus or minus 7 divided by 8. Uh, the plus or minus means we're going to do this twice. Uh, the ver first version is xc equals 1 minus 7 over 8. This is going to give you a negative number, and a negative compression makes no sense. So remember, usually in physics, when you do uh, square root, I'm sorry, the quadratic equation, you end up with one of the numbers being tossed out, one of the answers being tossed out, the negative one. So the other one is going to be positive, 1 plus 7 over 8. That's 8 over 8, and it's 1 meter. And that's the final answer. So the total compression, the maximum compression, is exactly 1 meter. Cool? Let's do the other one now.